I want to apologize for everyone who has been waiting for this video for so long. I'd just like to say that we are <laughs> we are just a small team of friends who don't have a lot of time between us and we have a list of questions to be answered in video as long as our own and we will get around to it in the end should have made this video a lot lot sooner but sadly we didn't anyway it's here now and this is how to make your own QR code First of all, you need to go to the address that's on the screen. It's vr.google.com slash cardboard slash viewer profile generator, all one word. The link to do this will be in the description box below. Obviously, you don't want to type all that rubbish in. At that point, you come to this screen with the orange top, uh, viewer profile generator, and you scroll down. Now something important to be done here before let you do anything because you might have been there before and, and if you've done a Google Cardboard profile before it will have saved. So you need to click on reset form. Click on that and then reload the page. Do not carry on because it will contain the same information in the ghost information as before and it won't <laughs> literally create the profile and then it'll be called the wrong things and it'll have the wrong settings it'll have the same settings as you entered last time so now when we scroll down i can see that your company and viewer name is both empty on your company you can maybe put your own name if you want to kind of copyright it in some way or you can just put in the viewer name now as you can see we've gone for a really generic headset that we haven't reviewed yet because uh it's shit that's <laughs> that's the stuff you on end or of it is it didn't even come in a box i'm i swear that they've just 3d printed it i don't know but either way we haven't reviewed it and it's definitely not got a qr code so I think I'm going to call it VR Box Purple. And we just enter that in there. Now you can call it obviously what you want. You can call it generic Viewer 01 or whatever that you've got. But on all our QR codes, we just prefer to enter the headset name or whatever it's got written on it. Again, entering any information into your company is entirely up to you. It's not necessarily needed. Next one down is primary button type. So none if it doesn't have any input switch, a magnet switch on the side, screen touch button or indirect touch button. If you're not sure, it's best to leave it none. Most headsets, particularly this generic one that we've got here is none. But it is always worth checking. Check upside down, check the sides. Do make sure that do make sure that there's no button underneath or somewhere like that as they do have a nasty habit of putting the button just about anywhere next up is screen to lens distance now you can see on the image that it's the point of the screen to the point of the lenses so what we need to do here so with this it's best to open it up with this headset <laughs> this headset has like weird little uh twist things on the side which is pretty cool let's get that off uh i think the easiest way to do it <laughs> is to do it uh from the inside of the lens to there now obviously you can't really uh measure in there unless you're going to use use a ruler to go from that point to that point but what i prefer to do it's just look at where the side is roughly and I can tell that it's roughly on the gap line there which is about right so the point that I want to record on this headset if I just put that there hang on if I can get it there there it's from this point to this point which in this headset is 
<laughs> Let's have a look. Quite a lot. There we go. A little bit more. There we go. And on this headset, it's 66.35. And you enter that in the screen to lens distance. Just like this. Here we go. The next part is into lens distance and click on that. And that is the point between the middle of the lens to the middle of the lens in between. Okay, into lens distance. Now this is the point where many people come unstuck. Particularly if you have, like this headset, you have adjustable pupil distance. Now surely the <laughs> sort of minimum distance is uh, from this point to this point and the max is from uh, that point to that point. It is always best we found to make it the bare minimum and then measure it. Moving it outwards can slightly adjust the screen making it a bit clearer but if you make the profile out to be the largest nine times out of ten you can't fine-tune that image so it is best to make sure that they're both in and measuring on both in on these I think that's about right yeah that's about right so 54.98 and we enter that into here Now you can't enter it all, so you have to enter 54.9. The next part is, of course, screen vertical alignment. You've got three choices here, bottom, center, and top. This measurement is always about where your phone sits in the case. On some mobile VR headsets, there is a little ledge and the phone sits on there. And then you need to record from the bottom of that ledge to the center. On some phones, <laughs> not many, but on some, there's also a sort of clip system. And that will be from the point of center going down. Not all of them, but there are the odd one or two that does clip it into the top. And then from the top to the center. But with this particular one, with this particular case, there's suckers. So when we put our phone in, let's put, get our phone and put it in there. There we go. It then puts it into the center point. So with this headset, when we put it in, we know that the phone is always going to be in the center point. So on this model, you have to click center. If there's a ledge underneath or feet pads for it to sit on, you need the bottom measurement to the center of the lenses and on the odd one or two that does have a top clipped in mechanism and there's not many but I have seen them you want top to the center of the lenses but this one's the center so when we click on center so we're over here so on screen vertical alignment on this model we click center and that makes the measurement setting disappear because there's no measurement to be given it just sits in the center provided that you've got it settled in right in the case now this is the hard bit this is distortion coefficients k1 and k2 now to do this you scroll up on your mobile phone or any smartphone you need to go to this address or you can just scan the qr code so on our phone, I'm going to scan QR code reader, there we go, and I'm going to go to this address. And then it says tap your screen. After entering the full screen mode, place your screen into the mobile VR viewer. So you tap the screen and put it in there. Okay, so now it's in there, 
You then need to scroll down onto your computer to the distortion coefficient section. And then what you need to do is adjust it so that each square looks exactly that in a three dimensional space. So if I do this one all the way up, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> there you go. So what it has done is distort it quite a bit. And I'll put that down. Just wait for that to catch up. And there you go. You can see that the distortion has now gone from the edges. And on this one. So this one kind of bends the center of the screen. Can you see it bending? I do it, uh, I do it a lot more. We we'll just distort it beyond all that it is. And as you can see that it's really bent out of shape now. I mean, there's no, <laughs> looking through uh, this cheap headset, there's no way that that is correct. So the idea is that you keep going up and down, up and down. You do have to keep flicking between the two. It's a little bit annoying, but you will get there in the end. So if I click on this, hang on. Uh, that's about right. Hang on. Do I want? It's not. Just checking around, making sure that looks pretty square. That looks pretty square. And they look pretty square. It all looks. Do you know what? I think that's it. I think that's fine. And there you go. It's now been adjusted to the exact distortion coefficients of the lenses in the headset. Looking back on the screen, you've got now a rough image diagram of what the lenses should look like. So you can see over here that this one seems to curve inwards, just like so. And looking over actually onto the headset, I can see the, the lenses really do curve inwards just about but not a lot there you go so that's how that you do that bit like I said just make sure that them squares are perfectly uh, square <laughs> I know that sounds silly and it will make sense when you see it in your VR headset because it'll be three-dimensional and you'll get the depth and you'll be able to a gauge that it's like a corner of a box and things like that you'll be able to see it properly trust me when you're in the headset the only problem is that you do have to adjust this while you're in the headset which is a little bit of annoying but you can do it now getting back to this one we then click on advanced perimeters and I do advise not necessarily to touch any of this unless you're still having problems but even by Google Cardboard Profile Generator, it suggests that you do not touch them. 50 is pretty much the preset for most smartphones between 5 and 6 inches. So all of these shouldn't be touched, but you can if that you need to. So what does it mean? Within the advanced view and perimeters, you can configure the field of view to your left lens. However, Changing the field of view angles results in only slight rendering optimization on large screen smartphones. For most viewers, these fields should be set to 50 degrees and no more. Also, within the advanced viewing perimeters, you can configure whether your viewer contains embedded magnets. Selecting the magnet checkbox will inform all apps built using the Google Cardboard SDK that the smart that the smartphone's magometer should not be used. Note, we strongly recommend that you refrain from using magnets. Viewers with magnets-based input will not be certified moving forward. So basically, <laughs> it is for slightly more advanced uh, adjustment, but even if you do fiddle around with this to the point of perfection, the increase in display is not going to be uh, worth the effort. 
it's, it's the be all and end all about it so often so basically we don't ever touch that bit but i thought i'd show it to you anyway and believe it or not we are done that's us done and when we click on generate profile now and now i go over and i scan the qr code so scroll over you click on load up google cardboard click on the little three little dots click switch viewer and scan up here there you go successfully paired your phone is now configured for vr box purple viewer and away you go it really is as simple as that if you have any other questions about this please do let us know i think we've pretty much covered everything on this but if anything is missing or you have any more questions about it do let us know in the comments below once again i do humbly apologize that it's taken so long to make this video but hey it's in here now and in the meanwhile fancy winning some cool vr tech just like what you've just seen all you have to do is sign up to our weekly newsletter the bottom of this video just click on this link here you'll go to this page put your email in click subscribe and confirm you're not a robot unless you are a robot then you don't have to confirm it and while it's not necessary to win i will ask please do subscribe thanks for watching